what to do day one of MLB The Show 24. Before we get into this, make sure to hit that like button and make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's get straight into this. Day one can be an extremely confusing part for a lot of people because they really just don't know where to start. There can be so many new things, so many new features, so many new modes, so many new collections, and so many new overall cards that we don't know who to chase after. Luckily, I've been playing this game free to play for the last eight years and this will be my ninth year now free to play. So I am just right here with you and we're going to do this together. Starting off with probably the most common way to start the year, it's going to be with Battle Royale. Battle Royale can get you the best bang for your buck. This can get you the most stubs as soon as possible if you do it right and if you play well. I've switched over here now to the Battle Royale screen. As you can see, at 3 wins you unlock a silver, at 6 wins you unlock a gold, at 9 wins you unlocked an 85 to 89 player, and at 12 wins you unlock a 90 plus, and you get a 12 win, or if you go 12 and 0, you get a flawless. Now generally at this time of year, this may not seem that tempting, but at the start of the year, Live Series Diamonds can go for 40, 50, 60,000, at least, at least, especially when you get to that 90 plus range, you can be looking at closer to 100 or 200,000. Now, obviously, everybody can't go 12 and 0, but if you play through enough BR games and don't quit out of your runs, if you let your runs play out and you get some nine wins even in there, even some six wins, some golds can be going for four or 5,000 stubs. Generally, you'd be looking at a run that would come in around, I mean, at the very least, you're probably looking at at least 150,000 stubs. I mean, that is huge at the start of the year. And another thing now, we have the Battle Royale program. And this is something that's going to give you free cards, which is either going to help you towards collections or it's going to help you with stubs because you can sell these cards. I mean, if we look at some of these packs, you know, these cards were going for around like 1,500, 2,000 stubs at the start of the year. And you'd get probably three or four of them in a pack. Take all these packs, add it up, and then you get your you get your rewind packs or what will, what will be your, your uh, pre-diamond before you get to the 12 and 0 flawless pack through the program which can also be here as well. So, I mean, if you think about it, the value even from just playing BR is extremely, extremely high. You need stubs and you need good cards early, and this would be perfect for you through Battle Royale. Something also to keep in mind, if you read right below my face cam, it says that BR now drops down to 10-0 for Flawless instead of 12-0. This is two less games that you're going to have to win, and believe it or not, those last two games can make a huge difference in whether you go 10-0 or whether you go 10-2. Now, of course, this could mean that with the, with the prices dropping down, the collections are going to be a lot harder to complete if the prices drop lower, because now you're going to have to get more and more 10 and O's. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how they incorporate it or what they do with win streaks as well. Maybe instead of needing to go uh, 3, 6, 9, 12 for wins, maybe they do 2, 4, 6, 8, and then, you know, 10 is your, your 10 and 0 pack or whatever they do, but... It's going to be interesting for sure, but absolutely, at the end of the day, BR is your number one way to typically get stubs done quickly and efficiently if you are good enough to be able to crank out 12 and O's, or like I said now, 10 and O's. Format number two that I'm going to be talking about is nothing other than flipping cards. This is an extremely popular uh, and new way to do it, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean by flipping cards and how to look for best things. So as you can see on the screen here, Dave Parker, you can see his buy now is at 62,000 when his sell now is only at 27,000. Now in MLB 24, at least off rip, you're never going to see a difference like this because people will be jumping all over it. Nobody has the stubs like this, but this is just an example for now. So you can see with Dave Parker, you can see if I put in a buy order at say 27,005, I buy him, then I sell him at 62,900. If we go here, we can see 62,900 would give me 56,000. That would give me about 30,000 in profit. Now, that would be insane. Once again, it's never like that at the start of the year. You're looking more at the start of the year for what used to be equipment. Now, a new change this year is that equipment may not be very valuable. With created players not being online eligible anymore, this is going to take away a lot of the value and probably change them closer to sponsorship value, which at the start of the year is basically nothing. So equipment used to be something you would flip a lot. Um, whether it was the more rare items, they typically have a bigger price gap. Um, but now that it is no equipment, equipment might just drop down or may not even be in Diamond, Diamond Dynasty altogether, which is going to hurt flipping a lot because this was something that was used most commonly throughout the people who flipped. So you may be asking Zazi, what, what should I do now if, if I can't flip equipment? Well, your, best ne your next best option is probably MLB cards. Now, you want to be looking for people that maybe could be a more expensive card. Um, typically, people are potential for a big year. For example, I'm going to take Jackson Holiday as an example or Adley Rutschman if he's low enough. Um, certain guys who are around that silver to gold range who have the potential to go diamond because their prices are typically higher and people are going to want to get their hands on them uh, very early. Now, another way to make stubs, and this is something I haven't mentioned before and I'm going to show you right now. If I go to open a pack, we're going to take the silver pack, for example. We open the pack, we get a silver, we get David Robertson. I can quick sell him at 125 stubs or whatever stub offer I get. 
But if we go here, we can see that his buy now is 740. I beg you, if you are not doing collections off rip and you are willing to sell these cards, especially day one when nobody has cards, they are going to be really expensive because people like streamers or content creators who do end up spending money, they have to buy the collections ASAP. So they're going to be impatient. They're going to buy cards. So I tell you, if you pull a card, any card, doesn't matter. It could be commons, could be silvers, could be golds, could be diamonds. Take that card, go to the market and go and list them personally. It's going to make you so much stubs in the long run, especially with all the free packs we get from both pre-order. We get it from Twitch drops. If you have your Twitch drops links, any other thing you get through programs, uh, uh, any of the BR programs, showdown, ranked, whatever it may be, trust me, hold on to your packs. And when you do rip them, sell those cards. I'm going to hit you guys now with the final method and then tell you exactly what my plan is for day one. So the final method is your conquest or any offline modes. This could include storylines, could include anything else that is, is a way to get stubs or packs. Now this may be viewed as an extremely tedious way to do it. This includes team affinity as well. Um, conquest can bring you a lot of good rewards, but at a very boring cost. If you have the patience to sit through something like the nations of baseball conquest we saw this year, you go ahead and go do it, man. I can't say that I'm going to do it personally, but you go ahead and do it. It's going to bring you a lot of packs and packs. Once again, if you get lucky in those packs, you pull a Shohei, you pull a Trout, you pull a Mookie, you pull an Acuna, you are set, man. That's That card's going to be going for 150, 200k plus, maybe even more. Could be up in the 300,000. We've seen it before, so I would not be surprised. But once again, it's, it's kind of one of those like, you know, low risk, low reward type of thing. It's pretty safe. You know what you're getting? You're getting the stubs. You're maybe getting a couple cards out of it. Now, if you're doing Team Affinity grinding for it, if there's some Team Affinity cards in there, for example, we were teased with a guy like Brian Dozier, that could be a great investment for you, or maybe even Vlad Sr. If these cards are going to make your team and the collections are maybe a month or two down the road as opposed to a week or two, um, Team Affinity and anything like that is going to give you great rewards and consistent rewards that we can see always. Now, they did also say uh, in one of the blogs that online rewards are going to be your best rewards typically they're trying to keep us away from offline grinding this year as 23 was a lot of offline grinding so that's a new change they've made this year and hopefully they do implement it well but you're still gonna have to play some offline at some point and conquest is a great place to start for free packs and free stubs and just free progress now let's get to my approach because everybody has a different approach but for me my day one and even the next probably five days after that is going to be strictly battle royale for me i'm a top player i have that experience i know i can win games in br i know i can get my stubs i'm also going to do a little bit of team affinity probably some showdowns in there because they're quick they're easy and they get good progress so showdowns are also going to be another place i focus and once again like i said listing those cards that you pull out of packs i'm doing collections but the way i do it is that i take the al and nl divided so i'm going to focus my attention onto one of them whichever one i think is the better reward and then anyways, if I am focusing, let's say the AL, for example, and the AL's Adrian Beltre is the collection reward. Just an example. Not saying that could happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, but let's say that let's say that's, that, that's the case. I'm going to take all my NL cards that I uh, pull and I'm going to sell them on the market. I'm going to list them. Once again, if it's only going to save me 100 stubs, who cares? 100 stubs is 100 stubs. You do it 10 times, you save 1,000. You save 1,000, you buy five different silver cards for the AL. So trust me, when you can penny pinch, penny pinch whatever you possibly can. Now, I know this was a lot of talking, but I want you to let me know in the comments exactly what your guys' plan is and if I helped you or not. Again, I thank, I thank you guys so much for coming by, and I hope we have a big year in MLB 24. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.